Hello, welcome to Border Bananas. My name is Jamie. Today I have three items that I have thrifted that I'm flipping for you guys. I have been working on these projects and having a lot of fun doing them, so I hope you enjoy them too. For the first project, I am going to take this thrifted, what used to be a lampshade, and cover it with this fabric that I picked up from Walmart. Um, this is actually the second or third time that I bought this specific pattern because I like it so much. Uh, it, it's, I believe they are $4, maybe $4 and some change for a yard of pre-cut fabric. I'm not going to wash it or anything beforehand because this is not going to be going, you know, it won't be washed again. Um, I was just going on the, on here. So I love this pattern so much. It has that beautiful light blue and sage green. It's all over, um, you know, botanical print. They're just leaves. So I am going to get started with this project. So let's get flipping. The first thing I'm going to do is rip one and a half inch strips of this fabric all the way down till I got a whole bunch of strips. Then I'm going to iron them in half so there is a finished edge on one side. Let's go do that. So it looks like there is a lot going on here with all these patterns, but I'm not even going to be super picky about how straight or how exact my one and a half inch pieces are going to be. Uh, so I'm just going to start and I'm just going to cut one side here. If I can... <laughs> <laughs> grab it and maybe I'll do two inches yeah I think I'll do two inches and just go like that and then I'm gonna go ahead and rip and then I'm just gonna gauge the rest <laughs> actually I might do that twice because if you look fabric is never cut evenly so this is why you rip when you rip the fabric it actually the rip is straight the cut is not so I'm going to do that again and you'll see that my next one will be nice and straight. And I'll go at about two inches again. It doesn't have to be perfect. There. And when I line up the edges, it'll be nice and even. <coughs> Use my cuff there see once I iron those they'll be perfect and I'm just going to keep doing that all the way down now we are going to just fold these bad boys in half first pulling off any strings that are loose let's set those aside and we're going to fold these in half so we should have an inch wide strip and we're going to press it down A nice clean press. We're going to do that with all of our strips, rinse and repeat, and then we'll come back with our strips in a moment. Okay, so I'm going to try to do this on camera because I am blind and when I do things, I hold it up to my face and then it's hard for the camera to see. So when I pulled this apart, all they did to have the original on here, it was just like white that had yellowed, was tie it the very first part. So I'm going to try that, but their strips were a lot thinner and I want kind of thicker strips. So I'm not sure how it's gonna look with thicker strips. The very first one I could probably fudge it so and it'll be in the back, so we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm gonna just try to see how it goes. Actually, I don't know, maybe I'll just glue it. I could totally just glue it and just leave myself a little extra room there maybe. Yeah, so I think what I'm gonna do is just glue it. I'm gonna glue it on the inside of the frame right here. So, let's try that. Got my hot glue gun here all ready to go. It's already sticking. Oh yeah, that's gonna stick nicely. All right, that's what I'm doing. Okay, and then I'm just going to wrap. And every so often, 
Okay, and every so often I'm gonna put a dab of glue. But here's what I wanna do. I want it to be wider um, on the bottom and narrower on the top. So I'm going to bring it like almost to the edge here and then closer at the top, like so. So I see how it's closer at the top and wider at the bottom. I'm gonna make sure when I glue, I glue the inside of the shade. So this will be a perfectly finished shade when I'm done. I should grab my scissors and actually, can I just tuck it this way? That's what I'm going to do, okay. So when I get to the bottom here, I'm going to fold this this way and go like this. And then I'll put a little dab of glue right here on this side. And glue it to itself. Oh, that's gonna look so nice all finished. I'm going to go ahead and glue this right over where I started. That's going to look so nice. I'm so excited. I'm doing it on the back, of course. And if I need to, I can trim off the inside a little bit. I'm going to hold it. I'm going to pull it nice and tight. First, I'm going to hold it. And I'm going to try really hard to keep my pleats even, the top and the bottom. Um, so I want them evenly spaced here and evenly spaced here, but I want this part to be smaller than this part. So let's see how I can do it. I'm going to put a little deck glue there though, because I'm going to pull this nice and tight. <clears throat> and, hold. and then I'm just going to wrap again. I'm hoping you can see. Let's see. There we go. And I think I'm going to put a dab of glue at the top. And the cool thing about this, if I haven't said so already, is that the entire shade is going to be finished. Now it's going to wrap around that a little bit, but that's okay. Let's see. I think I'm going to put a dab of glue down here. I'm putting it right on the edge. Just a teeny tiny dab of glue because fabric holds glue really well, right? Pull it nice and tight so I can wrap it around the bottom. I had to remember for a minute, how did I do that before? Now I remember. <laughs> I'm gonna put a little dab of glue at the here. Let's see, can you see where I'm putting the dab of glue? Right, right that little dab of glue right there on the edge. I just wanna make sure that's even, looks pretty even. I'll let it sit for a second. Just can I scooch in a little bit farther? There we go. It's holding. So then I'm gonna fold it over like so and pull it up and glue it onto itself. Let's see. And I'll put the glab dab of glue right here on the back. And it can be a little bit bigger, so it has a little bit more hold. And pinch. Well, I'm going to finish this up all the way around, and we'll come back. I am right at the end here. So all I did was I peeled this one open a little bit. I pushed this one back a little bit. I'm going to tuck the top right up underneath there. It's pretty easy to do. Add a dab of glue and pull that back over. Be careful of your fingers. 
so that it's up underneath there. You gotta make sure you get it in the back as well. Get it kind of hard to show you with there. Okay, so it's a little wrinkly, but that'll be okay. Nobody's ever gonna see it. Now I'm gonna trim that off. Put some more glue right there. Um, I actually put the glue a little too far over on that side. Pinch it so it's just a half of it. Fold it over like you were before. Let's see, maybe, no, you can't see it that way. All right, so I'm gonna put a little glue here and we're gonna miter this. I want this to look really clean and professional. So, that's glued down, pinched together. And we're gonna put this little bit of glue here on just this one side, push it down, and then we're gonna tuck that up underneath. And now we can go ahead and inspect inside to see if we have any strings, which we do. And let's see, I got this guy right here. He wants to come undone, so we are going to glue him down. I used very little glue in the beginning so that at the end, and I need if I needed to move some things, I could. There. All right. Now, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up my surface, but then I'm going to go back and I'm going to iron it down like this. Got this all done I'm going to fold this one end in like so and then fold it over again and I've left it so that this seam has one side a little bit taller than the other and I'm I just like the way that looks and I'm going to go ahead and glue the bottom layer of this uh, right to the top so it just covers the top of the shade And I'm going to find the back, so I start on the back. Let's see, where is it? Hmm, it's hard to tell. <laughs> um, where is that bumped one? On the top. There it is. I'm going to start right here. I'm just going to start it so it's slightly higher and it will completely clean up that top and I think what I might do is just go ahead and put the glue on the back of here then I can pull it tight like so now you'll notice that this is open. I'm leaving it like that on purpose. You'll see why in a minute. I'm holding it. There's lots of, oh, I need another glue stick. Lots of fabric here. So, there we go. Um, I don't need to worry too much about pulling it too tight. I just kind of want even around. <coughs>
All right, now I'm going to go ahead and measure to where this is. I'm going to cut, over cut it. Oh, I need my scissors. And I'm going to cut it long. So like that, I'm going to go ahead and cut it on an angle like so. Open this side up. Oh, we want that closed. <laughs> Let me just, I'll put a little dab of glue there. A little dab of glue there. There we go. And glue this guy down in. I'm going to still pull it a little tight. So it's right inside there. Then I can go ahead and just go like this. And flip that back up. Hold it. And that is how it looks all finished off. Oh, it's so good. And that's the way it looks from the top. Hopefully. Let's see. You can see that. Hopefully it's... I can't tell if it's focusing or not. I hope so. But yeah, that looks so good. I love it. Okay, time to do the bottom the same way. Here it is, all finished. And there, this is what the edges look like, the finishing spots. And there it is on the top as well. drawer divider that I thrifted forever ago. Do I even have, have the price on it still maybe? Yeah, $6.99. I probably got 25% off that, I'm assuming. But it just looks like this and I have been wanting to do something with it forever. I've been keeping it um, specifically to go either on this shelf over here or that shelf over there. Um, and somebody, it looks like somebody had painted it before in this maroon color, but I think what I'm going to do is something a little different. I am thinking that this is begging for an all over one color and then with a little accent on these. And this is going to be a great storage and organizational device here in my craft room. And whoever had this before loved Thomas. I'm hoping that you can see that. <laughs> all right so I can't see on the screen if you guys can see this or not I'm hoping you can but um, I'm just going to set it out out here it is really bright and really hot so it should not take too long for the, these to dry but I am choosing this color it's uh, ultra matte and it's coastal sage this is a color that I have going throughout my craft room I hope they still make it because this is my last bottle um, and so I'm going to get spray painting this. So this is what it's looking like so far. Oh my gosh, it's such a big improvement. It took like 15 minutes for this paint to dry. Um, and now I'm just going to give these handles a little bit of a treatment because I think they need just a little bit of something. So I'm going to use a little of this antique gold rub and buff. 
on there. And then I'm going to move this out of the way so you can actually see what I'm doing and I can see what I am showing you on camera. And each one of these drawers is going to get that treatment. I'm just getting a tiny, tiny bit and just kind of going around. Get it up on the front a little bit. Ooh, it works better if you turn. <laughs> I just kind of want to get a little messy in there and maybe just put a little something something in the middle to look like it ran, rubbed off, you know? And I'm not, I'm gonna make them all look just a little bit different. Oh, look how that sets it off. Oh, I love it so much better. It looks so good. I'm gonna let that dry and then I'll buff it later. on the leaves a little bit more, or the petals, I should say. Oh, that looks so good. I love it. I'm not even making sure that it's like even or anything. I think that looks really cool. I have changed my mind and I have moved it over to this side instead. I just feel like it feels a little bit less crowded over here. And then over here, I just moved my my journals and such over here, and I feel like it just makes it, it looks like it has a little more breathing room, you know? For my next project, I will be taking this shelf that I found at the thrift store and updating it and turning it into storage for my craft room. For the first step, I am removing all of the hinges to the doors because I don't want the doors on the finished piece. I am, however, saving the hardware for future projects in case I want to use that later. I am trying to replicate the color of my pegboard in my craft room. And at this point, I don't remember what the ratios were and I didn't feel like looking it up, so I'm kind of winging it. And I do know that I used the Waverly colored chalk paint in moss. And I also know that I used the color crystal, a little bit of that, and I may have used ivory. I'm not sure, but I'm using them all today to get the color that I am uh, working with here. So if you'd want to recreate it, just know that you need more moss and a little bit of Waverly's crystal and a little bit of ivory. There's no ratio, I just kind of threw it all together. And that is the color I'm using today. After two coats of chalk paint and plenty of dry time, I'm going to go ahead and seal it with my favorite sealer. It is pretty pricey, but it is my favorite, so that's what I'm going to be using. And I just put it on with a rag, and it does a great job. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this video inspired you to get a little crafty, get your hands a little dirty, and create something that you love for your home. If it did, I would appreciate a thumbs up and a subscribe, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you.